So you may be used to putting text into Midjourney or Dali 2 and getting out an image. Well, here is the complete opposite. You put in an image and you get out text. Now, you might be thinking, why is this useful? Well, if you're looking to replicate a certain style or piece of content, this is a great starting point for getting excellent keywords that the machine is gonna understand. So let's dive in and I'll show you how it works. So I'll leave the link to the site in the description below. And what happens is you upload a photo, you can drag and drop and put one in here. The example given here is a cat in a suit and the machine then outputs a number of keywords that it thinks relate to the content inside. So we have here a cat wearing a suit and tie with green eyes, a stock photo by Hans Katz, Pexels, Fairy Art, Stock Photo, Creative Commons Attribution, Quantum Wave Tracing. So we've got some interesting words inside of there, as well as quantum wave tracing, which I believe is some sort of physics equation. What we can do with this is we can put this right inside of Midjourney and create an output. So we literally can copy all of these, come into Midjourney, type in imagine, paste those in there, and wait to see what we get. So here is the grid of four that I received from Midjourney. You can see it's done an excellent job at imitating the content, though the quality is slightly more painterly or illustrated. I upscaled one of these, and you can see we've got a pretty good likeness if you're looking to get this sort of subject. Now I went one step further and used the new photorealistic algorithm available in Midjourney. And I have to say the results are improving them remarkably. So here you can see the original photo and the one that I created in Midjourney. And so this is an extremely useful tool if you're looking to get a very specific look. So I've also tried inputting an image I created in Midjourney for which the prompt was classical space opera. And it outputted these keywords, a group of people standing in front of a piano a painting by Vadim Kashin, yada, yada, yada. So you can see it has identified some of the key elements, but it has missed out perhaps the cosmic context here. So another cool thing that you can do is you can take a photo with your webcam. I went ahead and took a photo of my face here. And you can see that it has output a woman holding a piece of pizza in her hand. A stock photo by Bedwyr Williams. Behance Net Art, yada, yada, yada. Demonic photograph. Well, I say androgynous. <laughs> uh, so you can see it's absolutely got a ridiculous output here. Let's see what Bedwyr Williams is like. So we can see some of the works by Bedwyr Williams. I think maybe it's picked up a little bit on a, on a pose like this. So, of course, I went into Midjourney and decided to create <laughs> this woman holding a piece of pizza, this androgynous <laughs> woman. And this is what it has outputted. And I've upscaled one of these. And here I am. This is what a computer thinks I am. I am a woman holding a piece of pizza. I believe the piece of pizza relates to the slight view of my pop shield on the microphone that I have here. So after feeling a little bit offended by the machine, I decided to put a more natural photograph of my face in. And once again, I am a woman holding a plate of food in her hands, but this time, it's a screenshot by Esther Blakey Mackinnon. So if we have a little look at Esther and the work that she does, she was a Scottish artist known for her paintings. And I think possibly it's picked up on some of the tones, the more muted neutral tones that I have in this photo, because the style for me obviously is a photograph and these are all paintings does not necessarily relate. So once again, I put these keywords into Midjourney, this time with the photorealistic filter, and this is what it comes out with. I can actually definitely see the likeness here. <laughs> this does look a little bit more like me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of an interesting photo. So thank you, machine. So I went on and I wanted to try a few different types of image to see how it performed. This was the image I used here and the output it gave was a group of bananas sitting on top of a blue surface, a stock photo by Helen Thomas Duranga. And Helen Thomas Duranga is a British American painter who made paintings of Hawaii. So perhaps it's picked up on the tones and the context. But once again, this is a painter rather than a photographer that it has identified. And yet I went on and inputted this into Midjourney. And these were the two best results that I got out of it. Uh, the first one was with the photographic filter and the second one was with the standard algorithm with this standard algorithm i also included the original image as a prompt and this is what it came out with these were the four options it initially gave i then tweaked the prompt a little bit and added equally spaced because it seemed to put the bananas in a higgledy piggledy arrangement i also changed a group of to bananas because it initially started keeping out these bunches of bananas and i have to say that the results are mixed here it doesn't quite have the same feel as the initial image where the strength of the composition and the work here is really based on the arrangement of the bananas being random yet consistent and our bananas here are not quite doing that they've simply just sort of been dropped and spread out is my feel so beyond this there is a, a landscape 
attempt, and the output of this was a painting of a mountain landscape with a river running through it, a matte painting by Asher Brown Durand. This is pretty similar, I would have to say, that these are very like the original and have done pretty well. So I put these back into Mid Journey and these are the outputs I got. You can see that it has done pretty well on the context, creating this mountain with a river running through it. And yet the, the style for me is slightly darker. I think there is a lightness to the original image that it's missing out on. And there was no brightness added inside of the keywords generated by the algorithm, something it has ignored. And here we have a, a painting of a woman's head with multiple circles around her, a hologram by Alex Gray. And it performed not so well on this one either, especially if you're looking at the type of image that's been created. There's a very psychedelic feel to this and the outputs that it gave, but none of them were really matching the content. So overall, this is a really useful tool for a number of reasons. Firstly, it helps you identify keywords which you can use to create certain content. It can also help you find artist styles which may relate to the work that you're trying to create. And it's a lot of fun to see what the computer thinks is inside of an image, especially if you put your own face inside. I can also recommend this if you're trying to identify who an artist might be from a piece of work. So it's almost like a Shazam for artworks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you find this in the comments. And if you're looking to learn more about Midjourney, do check out my course in the links below. I hope you have a delightful day.